أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum Today we will continue our study of Surah Al-Hashr from its uh, historical background and we were talking about the different tribes of Jews who settled in Medina Yasrib much before the advent of Islam. Among the tribes that settled in Yasrib, whole name of the Medina, the Bani Al-Nadir and the Bani Qurayza were more prominent for they belonged to the Kohan and priest class. They were looked upon as of noble descent and enjoyed religious leadership among their co-religionists. When they came to settle in Medina, there were some other tribes living there before whom they subdued and became practically the owners of this green and fertile land. About three centuries later, in A.D. 450 or 451, the great flood of Yemen occurred which has been mentioned in verses 16 and 17 of Surah Saba before. As a result of this, different tribes of the people of Saba were compelled to leave Yemen and disperse in different parts of Arabia. Thus, the Bani Ghassan went to settle in Syria, Bani Laham in Hira, Iraq, Bani Huza between Jadda and Makkah, and the Aus and the Hazraj went to settle in Yasrib. As Yasrib was under Jewish domination, they at first did not allow the Aus and Hazraj, Hazraj to gain a footing and the two Arab tribes had to settle on lands that had not yet been brought under cultivation, where they could hardly produce just enough to enable them to survive. At last, one of their chiefs went to Syria to ask for the assistance of their Ghassanid brothers. He brought an army from there and broke the power of the Jews. Thus, the Aus and Hazraj were able to gain complete dominance over Yasrib, with the result that two of the major Jewish tribes, Bani and Nadir and Bani and Bani Qurayza, were forced to take quarters outside the city. Since the third tribe, Bani Kanuka, was not on friendly terms with the other two tribes, it stayed inside the city as usual. But had to seek protection of the Khazraj tribe. As a countermeasure to this, Bani and Nadir and Bani Qurayza took protection of the house tribe so that they could live in peace in the suburbs of Yasrib. Before the Holy Prophet arrival at Medina until his emigration, the following were the main features of the Jewish position in Hijaz in general and Yasrib in particular. In the matter of language, dress, civilization, way of life, they had completely adopted Arabism. Even their names had become Arabian. Of the 12 Jewish tribes that had settled in Hijaz, none except the Bani Zora retained its Hebrew name. Except for a few scattered scholars, none knew Hebrew. In fact, there is nothing in the poetry of the Jewish poets of the pre-Islamic days to distinguish it from the poetry of the Arab poets in language, ideas, and themes. They even intermarried with Arabs. In fact, nothing distinguished them from the common Arab except religion. Notwithstanding this, they had not lost their identity among the Arabs and had kept their Jewish prejudices alive most ardently and jealously. They had adopted superficial Arabism because they could not survive in Arabia without it. Because of this Arabism, the Western Orientalists have been misled into thinking that perhaps they were not really Israelites but Arabs who had embraced Judaism 
or that at least majority of them consisted of the Arab Jews. But there is no historical proof to show that the Jews ever engaged in any proselytizing activities in Hijaz or their rabbis invent, invited the Arabs to embrace Judaism like the Christian priests and missionaries. On the contrary, we see that they <coughs> prided themselves upon their Israelite descent and racial prejudices. They called the Arabs the Gentile, which did not mean illiterate or undereducated but savage and uncivilized people. They believed that the Gentile did not possess any human rights. These were only reserved for the Israelites and therefore it was lawful and right for the Israelites to defraud them of their properties by every fair and foul means. Apart from the Arab chiefs, they did not consider the common Arabs fit enough to have equal status with them, even if they entered Judaism. No historical proof is available, nor is there any evidence in the Arabian tradition that some Arab tribe or prominent clan might have accepted Judaism. However, mention has been made of some individuals who had become Jewish. The Jews, however, were more interested in their trade and business than in the preaching of their religion. That is why Judaism did not spread as a religion and creed in Hijaz but remained only as a mark of pride and distinction of a few Israelite tribes. The Jewish rabbis, however, had a flourishing business in granting amulets and charms, fortunes telling and sorcery because of which they were held in great awe by the Arabs for their knowledge and practical wisdom.